Oh, hi, it's Zach Peter, your new favorite pop culture guru, serving you the hottest tea three times a week. From the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, unfiltered convos with your favorite stars, and of course, the latest from Vanderpump Land, I've got you covered. And new episodes of the podcast are now available in video on Spotify. And they don't just let anybody do video, but this platinum blonde has won them over. So if you want the latest news from the ultimate tea spilling professional, tune in to No Filter with Zach Peter. That's No Filter with Zach Peter on your favorite podcast app now. Welcome to the Story Worthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannah Spinney. Welcome to Story Worthy. I am Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannah Spinney and we're coming to you from the Luxor Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. One of the fanciest, swankiest, wackiest looking hotels in all of Las Vegas. You know, the Luxor Hotel, that's the big pyramid one, right? It's the big pyramid with the light that comes out of the top that goes straight up to space. Yes, that's exactly right. If you pass by Vegas in the space shuttle, you would see the light from the Luxor Hotel as a beam. The thing about the Luxor Hotel is when they built it, they did not consider how they were going to wash the windows on the hotel. Because it's a pyramid, right? Yeah. So they had to have this huge, like, outreach to find somebody to design (laughs) a window washing system. So now they have, it's automatic, nobody's on the building, and they have this big machine that constantly is cleaning the Luxor, sort of like how they're always painting the Golden Gate Bridge. It's yes, like that. Yes, exactly. Or, or constantly washing the uh, Disney Hall That's in right. downtown. Uh, in, in the downtown. Uh, by the way, our third member is here, the uh, uh, Sophie the Cat. The is Cat now is joined. now on the she's table. She's on right? the table, and she's going to take a nap on my notes. So right. the show is really going to go well as I try and move the cat. No, but the Luxor, see, that's Vegas all over. That's Vegas all over because it's like it's all about the appearance. Yeah. It's all surface. The flash. It's like all they care about is like, we have a pyramid. We have something oh, different. We, we're in a freaking sandstorm desert. How are we going to clean it? I'm sure we'll think of something. Right, exactly. But it's true. When, when uh, vacationers go there, who doesn't want to go in the big pyramid? Of course you want to go By in the, the big way, pyramid. By the way, I've been to the big pyramid. I haven't stayed there, and I was sorely disappointed. It sucks. It is so dark. The Luxor yes, is dark the and dreadful. It's place in the world. It's yes, like it is. a mall underground yes, in it Minnesota is. or something. It is. It's, it is. It's, I don't, yeah, like they, they, all they care about is the outside pyramid. The inside, they didn't use the space effectively. Not at all. There's just sort of balconies hanging weirdly. It, you don't get like, I mean, everywhere. Listen, I yeah. think we should tell the people why we're talking about the Luxor. Because they paid us to, and strangely, <laughs> we're doing the worst job in the world because we're talking about what a shithole it is. <laughs> So I think well, they're going to want their here, $3 Here's what's back. happening. No, here's here's what's what's let me explain here's to the fine really people happening. at home. We've got a guest here tonight. Her name is Chris Magaha. Do you know who this is, Hannes? Chris Magaha? The you, famous Chris Magaha? Yeah, you know, she's been on the show before. She's been on the show before. Ergo is a giant star. Do you know why she's been on the show or why she, she's back? Because she, she has a story of utmost importance? No, because she brings it. Oh, she brings it, yes. God, how could you forget that? Well, right. you know. So what she wants to bring tonight is a story she calls Carrot Flop. Carrot, carrot flop. And so I think to myself, I think she's talking about Scott Thompson, Carrot Top. Ah, that's that's Carrot Top's real name is Scott Thompson. That's exactly right. That is very disappointing. And then you put us at the Luxor because that's where he headlines. Because he is the headline. He is, uh, he is, uh, isn't he, he showed me a note. Isn't he the comedian of the year or something? You know, the... he's a very accomplished, uh, a lot of people rip on uh, Carrot Top because he is easily rip on. And he is easy to par- uh, parody. But, on you know, as a prop comic, well, there's been a lot of prop comics. Yeah. Steve Martin, Jonathan Winters. He's not the first. Well, uh, I wouldn't put them in the... Uh, Steve Martin had some props. Jonathan Winters, I wouldn't put... Jonathan Winters did a different thing. He was an improv guy, so you would hand him a prop. Oh, I see. And he would create something out of that. I see. Whereas uh, I would say Gallagher would be more of the pure prop comedy. Yeah. With the watermelons and the smashing and the so forth. Right, right, right. Now, now here's the thing with Carrot Top. He builds his own props. That's what he is all excited about. That's That's what makes him proud of himself because he builds his props so yeah. like one of his jokes might be uh he'd be, be pretending to be on a telephone with two paper cups and a string between and then he puts another string in another cup and he says it's call waiting get it yep it's not that funny and then he tosses 
It's it. You know, it's like uh, it's funny. You were saying because it's it's it is easy to to rag on Carrot Top, but every time I see him on the Tonight Show, I do a laugh three or four times. That's right, and that's a pretty good percentage. I think it's kind of like when when the fiance and I. We're yeah. driving over here tonight. We're listening. I think it was to Journey. Was it Journey? I don't remember. Don't right. stop and believing. And she was like, "Why? Why? When this came out, why wasn't I into this?" It's like I said because it was popular, but it wasn't hip. Huh? There's there's always something in popular culture that's basically pretty good, not great, but pretty good, and it's popular. But people who have Supposed taste are always like, oh no, I don't really care well, for you I know, think Jay Car- Leno. Yeah. Yet he wins all the he right. wins the rating wars. Right. It's like you well, do Car- laugh yeah. at Carrot Top. There's no getting he, around the fact he, that he's, he's laughing laugh his way to the bank. Is what he's doing. Yeah, he's like a multi multi. Let me multi, let right. me ask you this, Hannes. Uh, What's going on with his eyes? He's got some crazy tattoo makeup happening, and he's it's, got, it's constant. He's got, uh, permanent Latino makeup. Latino lady uh, uh, eyebrows permanent. like permanently stitched. L- Onto his face. They're tattooed. Like, no, they're tattooed. tattooed. He's, he's a, eyeliner. Yeah. I don't think it's his eyebrows. Eyeliner. I think it's eyeliner. And it is. It's um. It's it's in tattoo, I think. And so he always looks a little crazed. He always looks, he looks. Uh, crazed. He is, is like uh, developed like it's got to be steroids because he's bulked up like yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. And he's got red hair and he's got uh, tattooed eyelashes and eyebrows. It's and very the strange. whole thing is very disturbing. And yet he's laughing at, you know, he's laughing at the bank and we right. are... Uh, trying to act superior to on, uh, on uh, David Cross's Mr. On our papers. That's right. <laughs> David Cross had that show, Mr. Show, right? David Cross. And he did a little sketch uh, called Blueberry Head, making fun of Carrot Top. Ah. And then on King of the Hill, they called him Celery Head. <laughs> and on Family Guy, they called him Carrot Scalp. So, and, and on South Park, they called him Carrot Ass. And, and so, in other words, like, everybody is taken off on this guy. I mean. Yeah, but he's been around for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. well, he started also... in 1990. That's absolutely right. Is it that? Yeah, I would. I would have thought longer. And Gallagher, yeah, Gallagher was around for so long that he had guys who were basically uh, like Gallagher impressionists, yeah, doing his act under his auspices, like franchises. There was Gallagher two and Gallagher three. They were guys who looked like Gallagher. They did Gallagher's act in smaller venues that he would not bother to go to. Right, right, and right. He's making money off this, like opening a McDonald's in well, Fair- Old Indiana. And then Carrot Top, he's been on. Uh- Tosh.0 recently. He's done Gene Simmons' Family Jewels. No, he's, actually, he's done everything. He, he's done that thing where he's hung around for so long that he's come around yeah. to being cool. Like, uh, let's say a Chuck Norris. I wouldn't say he's cool. I wouldn't say that. You know, he had, no. he hit on me at the improv. Did I tell you that? Carrot no, Top. No, no. Scott Thompson. You, you, you buried the lead. I know. I you buried that lead. Why did I do that? Top? I, I did. I did. He said, hello, my name is Carrot. What's your name? No. He said, my name is Scott. I believe he likes to be called Scott. Wow, that uh, what a filthy, filthy mouth on this guy! How dare he tell you his name and ask how you he are? He asked me if he wanted if, if if he could buy me a beer. How about that? Okay, also, I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. No, I didn't say it was. I didn't say okay. anything. I, I'm it's always not, up for somebody wanting to buy whenever, me beer. Whenever a woman tells me that some comedian hit on them, it usually ends with like, "Hey, would you like to snort some cocaine off my ass in my El Dorado in the parking lot here at the Chuckle Hut in, <laughs> in Des Moines, Indiana?" So you see how that, uh, you know, that's where I thought you'd be going. But no, he said, "Hello, my name is Scott, and I would like to buy you a beer." So actually, you know, it wasn't good. quite that nice. I but, mean, it was more across the room, as it were, like, "Hey, you know, kind of, I'll check you out, and I'm checking you out." Thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was creepy, and he had that eyeliner well, on, the and eyeliner I couldn't didn't help. I think no, if he looked like a normal that. human being, you I can't been get like, past that. Ah, uh, yes or no? Honest, we have a sponsor that I think you know about. I know about. And I think you know about Amazon.com. Oh, yeah, uh, you know those tat- guys? Tattoo eyebrows. Oh, no, Amazon. That's right. <laughs> Amazon's actually selling services now, you know. Like what? Uh, I like massages and stuff really? you can buy on Amazon. So you could probably get some tattooed Like uh, a Groupon eyelashes. kind of thing. Like a Groupon thing. Oh, I didn't that's know that. Well, good for the, Amazon. I get those in the email. Yeah. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to go to our website, which is sorrywithapodcast.com. You go to our the uh, uh, Amazon banner ad. You click on it. It takes you to Amazon. You do your, uh, you do your business as normally which sounds a little dirty to me. And uh, then we get a couple of pennies off of what you bought. Well, the thing is, everybody shops at Amazon. It's like so easy. Right, you go I mean, on anyhow. You go on anyhow. So all we're saying is you go through our website and then that way, you know, yada, 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 we get a little bit of money. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. that. Exactly. Right. We, we get a taste, as they say in the mob, as they say in the Sopranos. Get a taste. That's exactly right. Okay, you guys. So wherever you are, stay moist. tuned because I, I hate that word moist. You know I know. That. I just, I don't know why I thought of that. I remember that was. What, what other words don't you like? Don't I like? I like all words. I don't like the word uh, b o o b. I don't know why. I never like that word. Boobs. Like, Bring, 
What? Oh, the word boob? Yeah, I don't like that you word. You just spelled out the okay. word boob? I also don't like the C-U-N-T. I say C-U-N-T. fuck every three seconds. I know, but I don't like the word. I'm just saying. Well, I also don't like the word I have armpit. Friend, I, I hate that word. Well, that's just because armpits are always bad. <sighs> armpits are never good. I hate the word pubic. I don't want to say these words. Yeah, that pubic could be. I don't know. It's gross, man. I think it might you be. Know, but I'm, I'm getting over the boob thing. I'm a friend and now who we're talking like about carrot word. top. You know what I'm going to. He that his his pubes are tattooed in. Ladies and is gentlemen, is that what you're saying? His pubic area. Wherever is tattooed? you are, you need to stay there because Chris McGaha is coming up, and she has a real story, Hannes. A real story. I hope it involves pubic hair. <sighs> stay tuned. Or boobs. Storyworthy tweets. So join us on Twitter and be our friend on Facebook. Hi, this is Tony Figueroa, and you're listening to Storyworthy. actually left the Luxor and gone through a secret tunnel to Area 51. <laughs> Why? Because Sherry suggested it. So therefore, we're now at Area 51, where oddly enough, everyone looks like Carrot Top, and they all have uh, tattooed in uh, eyelash. Eyebrows. Now, is Area 51 in Nevada? I thought it was in Arizona or New Mexico. <laughs> where is Area 51? It's in the fourth dimension. Oh, okay. And uh, because the Luxor is shining that light up to the sky. Up to the sky, exactly. That is... Probably built by uh, implants from mind implants from people in Area 51 so that they can signal their overlords and come and take over I the see. planet. Except right. that this is great because what will happen is the aliens will come like in, in uh, uh, what is that, Independence Day. Right. But they'll go right to Vegas. Right. Become gambling degenerates and they'll never make it right. to the point where they'll actually take over the Country, it'll be awesome. Or they'll go to the Luxor and they'll say, "What a shitty they'll hotel! Just, We're going back to our own." They'll planet. be just like these little green men with smoking, with the with the <laughs> dimes and the nickels and the yeah. and the things. They go, oh, great. You want another Diet Coke? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Honest, as you know, you can hear Storyworthy while on the go with Stitcher Radio. You know that, right? Stitcher Boy, Smart Radio? Boy, I do. I love me the Stitcher Radio because it's uh, it works for your I, iPhone, your Android, uh, whatever fancy smartphone you got, you can download the app directly. Or, or on your home computer. And the most important thing is it's completely free. You know that, right? It is free. That's right. Unlike and- most of the stuff on the interweb. No, like Stitcher's all the totally pornography, free. Which is so and there's expensive. literally thousands of podcasts and news programs just waiting for you at a button on Stitcher.com. So what you want to do, folks, is uh, head on over to Stitcher.com, or you can go through our website. And during registration, just put in Storyworthy. Storyworthy, it's all one word. And then Stitcher kicks us over a few pennies. Once again, honest, it's about us getting a few pennies. Getting a nice taste. That's what I'm saying. Moist. I don't like taste, ah. moist, boob, or... T- oh, God. Ladies boob. and gentlemen, I'm not over the boob thing. That really seems like the least offensive word in the world. I don't mind T I T. I don't well, want to yeah, say. Yeah, I know. I have a friend who doesn't like the word tit, which I get. I don't mind. I get that one. The boob, I'm not buying into. I'm buying into it. I don't. But. I don't mind tit. I don't like boob. There. Okay. You also don't like to watch black and white movies because you think the people in them are all dead. But that's true. Well, what if you were to watch? Uh, oh, right. You're not going to go see the artist. I can't are see you? the artist. I can't see the artist. Two because things. Because it's silent. It's black it's and white. Silent, but they're it's all black alive. And white, and it's all upsetting. It's upsetting. It's not upsetting. I think they might be dead. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Magaha is here right now, and you know, she has been a stand-up comedian and a writer and a talk show host. She did a little show called Love Line for Love like Line. 45 years. I swear to God. Wow. She was on that Yet show she for look so a day long. Day over 20. Way before Jenny McCarthy. Way before her. Uh, she's also an actress. She's been on Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Curve. And uh, her favorite projects, though, and this is where it gets very interesting, Hannes, because not a lot of people do what I'm going to tell you she does. Uh-huh. First of all, she works alongside her husband. I'm fascinating. So that's exciting. Wow. No, but wow. Eben Schletter. Do you know Eben Schletter? Eben Schletter. He is a musician and a composer. And he is one of these people, it, he is so intelligent when it comes to music. Like, he's so intelligent yeah. and intuitive. He's an idiot in every other facet of his no, life. No, but he's but a really music. interesting guy. He's this composer. And anyway, so Chris Magaha works with him, and she's been on a lot of uh, three, at least three of his different albums, <sighs> Tales of the Frightened, The Witching Hour, and the five-star rated Cosmic Christmas. Cosmic Christmas was in a planetarium. Yeah, big time doings. And and Eben's in the front playing theremin with his buddies, and there, it's so the band is live. You're mm-hmm. watching... 
above your head, this observatory show with Santa Claus, but also, also a lot of really right. crazy things. So I th- it, it was like really good if you're stoned because it was trip you right out. Yeah. I was but if you were say. a child, you would also enjoy it. So it's good for the stoned and for the children. Right. That's, that's our, good. that's our audience right that, there. That is your audience. Yes. Yeah. Children the and, and then children. incredibly high people. No, children, exactly children right. of stoners is basically, that is a big, that works. That's big. It works for LA. Cosmic Christmas is what I'm yes. saying. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, put your hands together for Chris Magaha. Well, guys, so yeah, uh, we were saying that uh, I, I'm going to do a little story called Carrot Flopped. So 1998 was beginning to be a good year in comedy for me. I was a regular stand-up at the Improv in Los Angeles, and I'd also, been, I'd also sold a pilot to HBO, hopefully starring me. But things in my comedy life were soon to get very weird. One night at the Improv, after my set, I was approached by this short, elven-looking manager named Gary. Apparently, I was exactly what he had been looking for. You're funny. You're attractive. Do you have management? Now, I'm not a complete idiot. I know the stories of agent managers and bookers who woo girl comics just to bag them. So when Gary asked me to dinner to discuss this more, I told him I had a boyfriend. And he said, great, bring him along. (laughs) So unless he was wanting a three-way, this guy didn't seem like some sort of horny hobbit after all. We went out to dinner with him, and by the end of it, I had a new manager. I'll fax the contracts over tomorrow. I don't have a fax machine. No problem, I'll buy you one. Ooh, he was good. But then, as it turns out, who was Gary's main client? Carrot Top. The bubonic plague of the comedy world with this crazy red hair and manic delivery. And worst of all, he's a prop comic. I come from a world of stand-ups who take months to craft the words of the joke just so to get that laugh. Carrot Top is the guy in the corner with the whoopee cushion. His other crime, like you said, Hannes, is he is wildly successful (laughs) with audience and paydays. Yes, America may have loved him but most comics loathed him. So when Gary told me his main client, needless to say, I balked at signing with him. But then he said, listen, I got CT to where he can own an island. (laughs) Sold. Today a fax machine, tomorrow an island. (laughs) So Gary's first job for me was to write a movie for Carrot Top, or (laughs) CT, as Gary liked to call him. He had a movie coming out in a few months called Chairman of the Board, and Gary wanted another script waiting to go. He flew me and my best friend Sandy, a comedy producer, out to Vegas. He put us up in a master suite at Caesars. He he took me to shops to buy hipper clothes. It was like pretty women, but with a Keebler elf. (laughs) The show itself was amazing. Laser lights, blaring music. The audience was so into it, you would have thought he was dead Elvis. Backstage, we hung out with Carrot Top, and he was friendly, and he was cordial, and he was actually quite funny. I I felt like a judgmental ass. No wonder this guy was successful. He was a nice guy, a a hard worker, yet a complete pariah in the comedy community. And there I was, right along with him, disliking a guy I didn't know for enjoying enjoying doing what he does. I'm an ass. (laughs) Over the, fex- and over the next few weeks, I decided to make my hidden assishness up to him. I write several movie treatments, and, the ne- and a few days later, Gary calls. Hey, Chris, CT likes the treatments, and he wants to discuss them with you. But can you do him a favor first? He needs a date to the Comedy Awards. Now, I had been to the Comedy Awards before when I was dating a pretty famous comic, Richard Jenny. So I knew the drill. There would be red carpet, photographers and about every well-known comic you could think of. Richard Jenny is the polar opposite of Carrot Top. He's a comics comic. He's been on The Tonight Show more than anyone, and other stand-ups respect and they love him. And now I would be going with Comedians Most Hated. I wanted to fix my assishness with Carrot Top, but I really wasn't ready to take on the whole Carrot Top-hating community, much less while wearing Nine Inch Hills. Gary, you know I have a boyfriend. I know that. CT knows that. This is a business date. You should be seen there, and he needs to be seen there. And you two are working together, so this is perfect. Ah, he was good. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with the nightmare that was that night, like sitting at the table next to Richard Jenny. But let's just say that it ends with Joan Rivers on E.T. wondering how much Carrot Top had to pay for his date. She called me a hooker. On national TV. (laughs) Hooray. 
A few nights later, finally, CT wants to get together and talk movie treatments. About time. He insists on picking me up and going to Dan Tan as a historic old, Holly, a historic old Hollywood restaurant. Stoked, I am ready to go. Let's get this Carrot Top movie train moving. But as we sit, I notice that every time, I'm ta- every time I am talking script ideas, he's ordering drinks. And another, and another. Finally, the idea about him as the comedy pariah who becomes cool, he likes. Go figure. So we start riffing on that, and then he goes, you know, I can't really concentrate here. Let's go to Chateau Marmont. Now, I thought he was talking Bar Marmont, the famous bar at the famous hotel. But no, suddenly he is dropping $600 on a room saying, honestly, you know, I'm just too drunk to drive back to Calabasas. I'll get a room and we can work there. Okay, given the dudes in the lobby hollering, Carrot Top! I figure, yes, you know, a little less distraction may, may be a good thing. When we get there, he starts running around the room going, look at this, booze, look at this, a light, look at this, a bed. I know, it's called a hotel room. (laughs) Suddenly, something came over him, in the veil of a drunken frat boy. The clown had never touched me before, but now these big prop mitts are all over me. Uh. Hey, why don't we go to the bedroom? You gotta be kidding me. And then he tries pulling me in that direction. No... He stamps his foot down. Come on! Now I am pissed. I am mad at myself for feeling sorry for him, and I'm also mad that I have been suckered. I cannot believe that I thought that you wanted to work. I stand in the bedroom door as he lies down on the bed. Ew. Seductively? I mean, you know, it is as cartoonish and horrifying as you might imagine a sexy Bozo the Clown to look. Now let's just picture him rubbing his crotch. Anyone scarred yet? Okay. Come on. Well, I mean, why did you think you were here? To work? Take me home. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, ha ha. Well, you might as well come over here because I ain't taking you home. <sighs> yes. He had me. He was the one with the car keys. What is a girl to do? Funny how the celebrity bubble and alcohol can make one blind to the obvious. I took a cab. <laughs> yeah. The next day, Gary called. What the hell happened? I want to go over him. I wanted to go over film ideas, and CT wanted to pillage me. Oh. And with that, he hung up. I never heard from Gary again. I lost an island, but I gained a fax machine. Yeah. Woohoo! Wow, yeah. Chris. winner! That is a good story. That's what? got Hollywood written all over. That is Hollywood. really upsetting about that guy Gary. Then he dumped you. Oh, totally. That is so upsetting. Like a potato. You know, here's the thing. It's like the whole time, I don't think it was really, obviously, look at me now. I'm so brilliant. It was never about me. It was, he needed somebody to A companion. He needed somebody to be seen with. Yes, to help Scotty. He needed him to be seen with somebody so it looks like he's sort of normal. Right. Wow. Right. And just, it was everything about, like, like with Gary, like his other clients were only writers for, for Carrot Top. It was only Carrot's writers, you know, Carrot Top's yeah. writers. So it's really, it's The just guys him. who write for his show. Yeah, yeah. And who are great comics, by the way. I don't know yeah. if you know a couple of them. They're, I mean, they're really great comics and they're really nice and everybody's really nice. And, but it's all uh, about the one It's client. all about the meal ticket. Are they sure. all men, I assume? Yeah. All those writers? Yeah. yeah. Carrot Top, yeah. And he lived in Calabasas? Uh, yeah, Gary has a place in Calabasas. Okay, no, Scott, Calabasas he has a place is a very wealthy area. Very I know, wealthy. but that's where Carrot Top was He has living. a place there. He has a place he there. He has a place there. He also has a place. In, his main place is Florida. Oh, oh and right. And he literally does, like, have an island off of Florida. That's his. <laughs> oh, he, no, this guy, he, he's very doing well. Wow. He's doing well. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? He really does have an island. He has in his well, pants. That's well, maybe I don't know. So, so you're in the doorway at the show. So, when you, why did you go up to the room with him? Because you really thought you might work. Or? I really thought we were. I really thought we were working. I am that dumb. I am that naive. I'm like, you know, I, but, I seriously. Okay, technically okay. yes, but, uh, but still, you know, people don't understand. People, people actually I, do uh, hold, how, how hold meetings. People in do Hollywood. hold meetings yes. in rooms. They they don't understand how powerful uh, a draw it is for somebody to hold in front of you exactly what you want, which is an actual career. Yeah. A manager who will look out for you and has connections and therefore it will, it's like you want it to be true. I never would have thought that I was actually like just a pawn. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Just... Like this is a very uh, elaborate David Mamet like scheme. This is long term. Right. This has been like, like weeks on. Like, I, already... I, I, yeah, I doubt. Is, yeah, right. it can't be that the only reason they came up with was to get you into that room with Carrot Top. No, no, Although no, no, no. Although they could no, probably no, no. see that coming, but it's like there's a whole thing where it's like we're gonna hire you. You're gonna write this. You're gonna, and then I guess there's just this underlying really old world sexism that like well this is show business this is how and it you're works. a no, woman honestly, and he's a man and he's the star so you're going to sleep with him at some point no, i thought mm. i think gary was actually very surprised too i really do well, in a way i think no back? i think no i think gary was like actually surprised that like you know like uh, that it went that direction i don't think he was thinking i thought he oh, would okay, have thought that scotty was going to be more professional but too he but then he's like up. oh then he's not professional okay great so what did he called his manager and he said, "Hey man, hey get Gary, rid of her. get rid of her." Wow, you think he said? Now, oh, did he say totally. that? Totally. I told that's my that's my theory. Did you? My okay. theory was like, okay, I can't work with. If if Gary has some scruples, as you seem to think that he does, I Gary the wrong. manager, I could totally be wrong. Yeah, you, know, you could totally be wrong, but he might be. It could be that he's got just enough scruples to be like, well, that's not cool. I didn't think he would try something. But also not have enough scruples to be like, well, I will now give up my gravy train. Absolutely, it's like not. I, right. I I can see a scenario where this was never discussed again, and right. he didn't call and say, "What did you do?" No, and he didn't say, "Oh, by the way, I've cri-. it's like he you went, suddenly that went away. It went no away. longer exist." Right. Absolutely, and the, the two of them away. never spoke of it again. Were right. you were you really? Did you really have a boyfriend at the time? Yeah, I was with Evan. Oh, you were with Evan at that time? Yeah. You've been together with him forever. Yeah, 15 years. No, I didn't know. Oh, how nice. Were you married then or just dating? No, we were were just dating. dating. And so um, Dantana's is a nice little restaurant. What was going wrong there? Why couldn't you stay there with Carrot Top? I have, I think that he had ulterior motives. Oh, but, and, but so when he said Chateau Marmont, you thought you were just going to be outside on the patio at I the bar. I thought we were going to the bar Marmont. Bar Marmont, right. right. Okay, I see. I like Dantana's. It's a very tiny restaurant uh, there on Santa Monica Boulevard. It's very hip. hip. People, it's very hip. Let me tell you, a lot of old school comics go there. Okay, but not only that, one time I was in there, okay, at my friend's b- birthday party, in the front room is George Clooney, hello, and in the back room is Johnny Depp. A lot. Well, uh, guess Why do I think this story would have taken a completely different turn if either one of those guys had brought yeah. you up to the Exactly. Right well, hello. I'm so glad I got you here, Mr. Do you Depp. Think, bang, bang. Does he have... <laughs> that was that my breast popping. Was that, that was uh, my breast popping. Complete with... Uh, 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 P- pantomime. That's yes. right, with pantomime. Um, <laughs> Are you a Bond girl? Is that with some of those bullets? For the... for Johnny Depp, I would yes. be. Oh, I you're th- not kidding. For Johnny oh Depp and George, George Clooney. Clooney. See, I'm like, oh, I, I, love I him. enjoy him. George but Clooney's I my favorite because to me, he's like a man. Like he's at that perfect age, at 49. That's when a man, to me, hits like their complete good-looking peak. Boy, is that ever true. <laughs> Honest, <laughs> you're 50 now, right? So was he. I said 40. Oh, is he really? George yes, is 50? Yes, he's 50. He's out now. Well, then but I can't go out with him. your face just fell like a cake. Yeah, then I can't go out with him. Oh, well. Um, let me ask you this. It's upsetting to get hit on like that, isn't it? But that's not getting hit on. That's basically har- being harassed. I'm sorry. Let, no, that's I very true. No, you. no, no. That's true. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you think you're there for a certain reason. You know, because it's not like I hadn't proven myself. It's right. not like I hadn't done anything. Right, it's not right, like, right. You know, and, and so it was just frustrating of like, oh, man, really? Again, yeah. that's what I yeah. mean. It was yeah. Like yeah. More of like, that's the part that again, I'm trying to say is like people, it, it's like it's what you if want. If I was it's a like, dude, this wouldn't you, happen. You yeah. have guy writers. Yeah, right. you, you have hold guy writers. on to so why the idea that you're going to get have, what you want in show yeah. business till the last possible moment until he touches his penis. Yes. You were like. He really, I can still pull this out. No, totally. I can make this work. He was oh, really he's touching his crotch. He was really I, on the bed touching his crotch. He really was. I That's sw- so I'm upsetting. not lying about a word of this. I'm Did not. he have the tattooed eyeliner at that time? No, this is 1989. Okay, so he didn't. Yeah, there was not, a fax machine. He did not involved. have that. It was a fax machine. No, involved. not 89. 99. I'm sorry. I was going to say, it can't be 89. You, you don't have to look at your notes for that. I do. You know what, you know what decade how much, was. how much wine did you give me? See? Let me ask you this. Uh, the comedy awards. Was this when the comedy awards were at the Shriners? Where was the comedy awards? The shrine, you mean? Shrine. The shrine. I think so. I think the shrine. Yeah, and they was also at the wear Shriners small Club. bikes and funny hats. And obviously, Carrot Top would have fit in perfectly yeah, had it like... been at the Shriners Club somewhere <laughs> in Culver City. No, the Shrine Auditorium, because I was at the Comedy Awards once back in 99. It might have been the same year. And the, and the swag, maybe you remember this, was jumper cables. 
and it says take a jump into comedy comedy awards i think it was 98 now that i think of it but they're still in my car it was the best swag i ever got a set of jumper cables did you have a question, Sherry? That is a first Oh, Sherry, I thought she was raising her hand. And I thought maybe no, she'd like to be called upon. she's just leaning up against the wall. Oh, and then there's the big party afterwards where everybody goes to the comedy store. No, I didn't do Oh, yes, I did do that. Yes, yeah. I did do there's that. There's the big yeah. party after, yeah. In the main room. Yeah. And yeah. That was who when were you Richard with, Count Christine, Corden. and did they hit on you? Uh, uh, oh, gosh, I don't even remember who I was with. That's terrible. I don't even remember. And I don't think I got hit on. But I've been a hit on before when it's very uncomfortable. And, you and you know, and it's just kind of like, ooh, ooh. The way he's looking at me, I just want to be sick. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not, like, it's funny because it's like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm an attractive woman, but I'm just saying when I was younger. No, but, you know. You are like, an attractive woman. But some you people are... think that, like, oh, that must be so nice because you got it easy because you're skinny and people hit on you. It's like, you know what? That's not actually always a good thing. No, and I my my biggest problem is that I'm just hugely naive about it. Yeah, I'm completely oblivious. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I'm completely oblivious that like what we're going in this direction. Because you have a good heart. Because you you have a good heart, and you don't want to think other people are as evil as they are. Tell you my Bill Maher story sometime. That's delicious. Wow, that couldn't possibly uh, involve sexual misdeeds. You're gonna need. Let me just say this. I just realized something about your story. The see the crazy thing. One of the many crazy things about show business is. It is not I mean, people like, oh, a man invited you to a hotel room obviously wants to hit on you. That is not necessarily so. No. It is perfectly plausible that Carrot Top could have got you up to that suite and you would have done actual work. I cannot that tell you how many times I've actually, yeah, had like, that, you know, okay, we're gonna we're over at this hotel and and you know, and it's there's there is a room room, yeah. right. but then there's a whole Conference living room, room area, there's a whole right. other area that you go to, you know. Yeah. That, I can't tell you how many times that's happened where it's like, okay, or if you're shooting a show or whatever, yeah. we're meeting in this lobby and we're going to this hotel and yeah, blah, 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 Especially if you're blah, out blah, of town blah. and stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah of I course. Mean, and, and for him, it is technically out of town. Even though he has a place in Calabasas, he normally is either in Vegas or he's in Florida. Does so. he have a girlfriend now or is he married, do you oh, think? God. No, I, I wonder. No I don't idea. think so. It's kind of like so. a, yeah, me neither. No, uh, two more things. So you did date Richard Jenny for quite a while, Richard Jenny. We lived together for three years. For three years. And so when he killed himself... Yes. That must have been very shocking for you. Uh, stunning. It, stunning. It, it was stunning. Yeah, because, I mean, he was always uh, very, you know, uh, crazy. <laughs> I, guess yeah. Yeah. I hate to use that word about somebody who's passed on, but it's like he was all, but he was so brilliant. That's the thing with but him. Did but you but always, he always had a lot of neuroses. This is Richard right here. He would always, he'd be sitting there talking to you and you'd always tell me he was nervous because his hand would go up here and he'd start twirling this, this little stitch of hair right back here. Right. Behind her ear. You know behind what? I have his, a friend who did that and he got this big sore behind his ear because he was always going like that. Like that was his thing. His, that, t- his Yeah, twitch. he had a lot of ticks and he had ticks. things like that, that but gross? he was like well, insanely, turn. he go was ahead. insanely <laughs> brilliant. Uh, insanely yes, brilliant. Insanely brilliant. Look him up on the old YouTube because he was an he awesome was, um, comic. Uh, Self destructive then? No, no, no. As a matter of fact, me and his uh, best friend, this guy named Dave Boone, who now writes for, um, he's one of the executive producers of Dancing with the Stars, but he's a he's wow. a well known writer and he writes for the Oscars and he writes for just every major comic. Right. He was one of uh, Richard's absolute best friends. Both of us were absolutely convinced that uh, that. You know, he didn't kill himself. We oh. were absolutely convinced well, that there was minute. no possible way because he had a major fear of guns. He had a huge fear of guns. But he was he, in his own apartment with his girlfriend. Right? He was with, you know, he had gone, like, now I said, okay, I was with him for three years and then we were, you know, we broke up and we stayed very good friends. We, like, every time we saw each other, it was a big love fest and we were very close. Uh, but then, of course, as you do, like Boone went one way and then another guy named Chicky, who's Hal Spear, left him too and went to go work for, other comics and so everybody who was like his tight knit circle kind of went Split, away from yeah. him at the same time right and uh so he kind of he just kind of slowly but surely like the brain just started going away and he, do, he, do, he, do you he, ever wish it was carrot top who had done this oh good grief <laughs> no i don't wish that on anybody i, I was i i swear to you because i i was like blown out and it was really do you know who sam levine is no uh, very Norwegian guy, Sam Levine. No. He was on Freaks and Geeks, and okay. he's on. Uh, oh, he was well, in yes, Inglorious Bastards, and he's on Largo yeah. shows and stuff like that. I was, of course, now having moved on, and I had kids and stuff like that. I was like asleep. <laughs> I'm asleep at noon. I mean, at midnight. Sorry. Right, right. Uh, and and for Sam, it's like noon, and he calls me up and he goes, "Please tell me it's not true." Oh, wow. and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Please tell me it's not true." And he's like, "Did Richard kill himself?" And I'm like. Y- 
what are you talking about? And he's like, it's, you know, I, I saw the story and I, I, it, you know, I don't know if it's true because I can't find anything else on the internet because he was, all, he was like a huge fan of Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway. That's um, really something. It was, yeah, really That stunning. night at the Comedy Awards when you were there with C.T., Yes. By the way, CT, what is he, a CAT scan? I hate that. What is that? <laughs> what, uh, did Richard laugh at you when he saw you there with him? He was he was saying, is this, was like, is this your way to get back to me? Yeah, was it, it humorous? Yeah, yeah. It must have been. Yeah, he yeah, was I like, is this your way to get back to me? I thought that was hilarious yeah. because yeah, that couldn't did. be more. He was like, yeah. and I'm like, no, 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 no. I, saw, I was like, to anybody that would listen to me, I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get an island. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, wait till uh, yeah, they invite you to shut him up. I swear to you, this is a business. Wait till he's a big whore. Not the sex kind of whore. It was the art whore. Managers, set me up with him, I swear to you. Chris, would you like to play a little shotgun story, Worthy? Oh, I'll try. All right, let me tell you what's going to happen. There's a wheel behind you. You spin the wheel. Whatever topic you land on, there's 16 topics. You tell a one-minute story on the spot. Can you do it? All right, here we go. <laughs> spin that wheel! Growing up. Okay, my uh, one-minute story about growing up. Uh, it would be hard to believe this about me, but I was actually a holy roller for a long time. I was extremely Southern Baptist. I was the one who was like, you know, I went to church. I went to church absolutely every Wednesday and twice on Sunday because Jesus is my Lord and Savior and my friend. Yeah. And I would anybody that would listen, I would sit there and preach the good word of uh, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, to you and try to save you. That was the way that I was grown up. And uh, then, of course, I got a big shock to that when I went to Texas and I went to one of those, because I was a very small church that I right, was raised right. in. And then I went to one of those mega churches. And uh, that was my whole thing. I go there and I'm like, all right, after this service, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to go talk to, you know, Reverend Bill or whoever he's in. He's going to be so pre uh, pleased that I'm here to see him. And I get all the way down there to see him. I've been seeing him on that big TV screen. I get all the way down there and I'm like waiting in the big line to go up there and talk to Reverend Jim or whatever his name was. And I'm like, hi, Reverend Jim, I'm Chris McGaha and I'm here from Carolina. And I'm so pleased to meet you and I just want to let you know I'm here to be part of your uh, that's very nice to meet you. Anyway, so Bob, about Wednesday. Now, golf is wow. not good for me. I don't think it's very And I was like, okay, close enough. <laughs> and that was it? That was the end of your Christianity? That was the end of me being a holy roller Christian because I realized, like, everybody that I saw in high school and stuff right. that was going to the same mega yeah. churches and stuff yeah. was not doing it. They were like, you know, drinking and getting their boobies felt up. Where did you? Boobies, that's right. Did you? Did you? Did you used to have a southern accent? Yeah, yeah. Really? Well, when I was in Carolina, it was really strong. But you know, I worked to get rid of it. I didn't like know that. that about you. I didn't know. I didn't know that about you at all. Oh, and why did you go all the way to Texas to that church? Because my mother moved there. Oh. My mother, my parents divorced when I was growing up. And stuff. Right. So and my then, father was a colonel in the Air Force, and we bounced around a lot. So I didn't have a very strong accent, you know. But so, when I was in Carolina, it, I'm one of those people. I will pick up accents. Do you think that if you had, uh, you know, stayed in the bosom of Jesus, maybe you wouldn't have been in a hotel room with a strange man? <laughs> No, no, I would have been blowing him in the parking lot. Oh, my ah, God. Ah, that's right. That's honest, no, man. No, that's, that's totally honest. true. That's what the church is. That's an honest you. Christian right there. I did a little Christian phase for about three years because everybody there was so nice, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody was so friendly. It just worked out so well until then, like you said, you start going and you start seeing it a little closer up and a little, and you start realizing like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you talking about the Bible that says you're not allowed to be homosexual? Is that the one I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be going for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Well, well I can't. All, it is, it is such just a sheep thing. Yeah. And, uh, and God speaks because that like most of my family is like that. They're all still in the Carolinas, wow. and they're, I have missionaries in Africa I wow. have, that are going and trying to teach the natives the good power of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, because um, you have to say that all together at once. Uh, so they're actually out there being missionaries. I wow. mean, I have really strong, my, a lot of my family is like very strong faith, but I felt, I mean, I literally, it was just such a like, oh, Are you bringing oh, your children up in any sort of religion? Uh, they are going to a temple. They're going, they're Jewish, which to them, you know, of course, a lot of my family's like going, okay, where's the horns? Because all Jewish people actually still have horns. Except that uh, they actually except, still believe it. They believe Except that. that their counterparts in the Orthodox Jewish community are going to say that because you are not Jewish, the children are not Jewish. True. True. So there's are you, be... you're raising them Jewish. No, I, I know, but, no, but uh, are, I know, legally, no, I know. Technically, you have to be a mother. It's a have... reformed. It's t Temple right. Israel is is reformed. How yes. interesting, Chris. I'm sorry, I just have an old Woody Allen joke. Is 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 uh, he's a reformed rabbi? 
he's a Nazi. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. So reform. That's cute. Exactly. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap this up. But first, I wanted to say that uh, Storyworthy is funded from listeners like you. You no. at home, you. We're yeah. pointing at you. We can see you through the computer. Put some pants on. That's exactly right. Now, if you'd like to donate, you just go ahead over to uh, storyworthypodcast.com. You click on Donate. And if you can't support the show in a monetary way, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a good review. That helps our ratings on iTunes, and it keeps our cool yellow logo on the front page. You know what I'm saying, Hannes? Yeah, we can be we can be seen by people all across the world on the interweb tube. That's exactly right. And also, we've got a couple of... Uh, what do we have, Hannes? We have a, we have a website, don't we? got a Facebook we? page. we got a, a Twitter page. And we have our own page, Storybook, Storybook, StoryworthyPodcast.com. Who do you work for? Storybook.com. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a place where um, people dress as woodland creatures. I, I've said enough. I don't want to go Are you going to be a furry? Do you want to be a furry? I, I believe they're called fuzzies. Actually, at work, they're called fuzzies. Furries, oh, really? I think, are people who dress up to have sex. So where do you like work that. that you're called fuzzies? Oh, you mean no, Universal. Universal, those characters are called fuzzies. They're called fuzzies. Okay, well, I'm talking furries. about the furries. They're the ones that sleep in, together with animal costumes. Right, right. Or uh, no, I'm not one of those people. That's good to hear. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of effort. I would say you got to have right. the whole thing. You got to you know balance the head. That's uh, that's that's. Chris, a uh, are you happy? Are you doing good? I'm great. You Just, are great. It was so, a good story. Thank oh, you very thank much. You. I'm really uh, excited you're here. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Me. All right. So we would like to thank John Thomas Griffith. You know this guy, hon, is John Thomas Griffith. Never heard of him. He wrote our theme song, Follow Me, and he's out there touring with Cowboy Mouth. You can also find Son him at johnthomasgriffith.com. I'd also like to thank Chris Magaha, our storyteller. Where can the fine folks find you? On the Facebook. On the Facebook. And they can also go to um, the Nether Rota studio, which is also there. Now, that's the studio, recording studio that me and my husband own. Evan, what's it called? Uh, ne- the Nether Rota. Nether Rota? Nether Rota studio. And uh, all sorts of great comics. Well, they do the Paul F. Tompkins podcast out of there. Right. Pod F. Tomcast. I love that. And we do that out of there. And if you know who Garfunkel and... and oh, they're Oakley, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, those guys are doing they great. They record there. And cool. we have all sorts of great people who are there. Awesome. So, all right. Well, maybe Storyworthy's going to head on over there. I don't know. <laughs> All right, you guys, that also on behalf of uh, Jorge Reyes, our sound engineer, and, of course, my co-host, Hannes Finney, my dear, dear friend. My name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it the story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. If you have a five-minute story that is worthy, send us an email at info at storyworthypodcast.com and you may be on the next Story Worthy. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. tires and get up to $250 in savings after rebate at Bell Tires 4th of July sale or get even more in Bell Tire gift cards June 20th through July 2nd plus get tires as low as 49 bucks after rebate get up to 250 in savings or get even more in gift cards June 20th through July 2nd get up to 250 in savings choose the lowest tire price period at Bell Tire 100 years of getting folks safely back on the road fast and affordably see store belltire.com for details restrictions apply Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.